get right into it. Let's get right into it. So I made this video before, but this is going to be like how to build a center physique, which is going to be the most important thing when it comes to body game, guys. A lot of you guys ask questions about body game, what exercise to do. If you guys want to build a center physique, man, stay locked in, stay fit. Let's get into exactly how you're going to do that, all right? Because like I said, this is this is the first part of body game, but this is also the first part of confidence. But this is also going to happen in all other aspects of your life because – Yes, some fit people are not successful in life because they don't apply the same fitness principles. But when you have to increase discipline from fitness and you apply it to any other aspect of life, it'll be good. All right. So what is an aesthetic physique? You're going to have a V-taper. You feel me? This is uh, David J.B. Fit, and this is Alex Eubank. Brian Lopez, Austin Dunham, they all have aesthetic physique V-tapers. You're going to look good shirtless, of course, but you're also going to look good in the button down. You're not going to look too steroidy. You know, those, those dudes that try to wear the tight uh, fitting shirts and their shoulders are massive because they're on steroids. You're not going to look like that, but you're going to look aesthetic. You can wear, you know, you could have some good street fashion. You know, you can look good in a tank top. You look good shirtless. Like you just rock everything you wear. Because for me personally, like ever since I, I got aesthetic, I absolutely wear the cheapest shit. And everyone's always like, oh, shit, I didn't know you can wear Armani. I'm like, no, it's just the way it fits me. It's really just, you know. Not even Gucci, it's Lucci, bro. You feel me? Like, it's, it's some fake-ass Walmart shit, bro. I'm wearing Faded Glory, and you're wearing Balmain's, but you think I'm wearing Balmain's, and I think you're wearing Faded Glory because of how it fits. You see what I'm saying? But, yeah, shout-out to Faded Glory, man. All right, so we all know that training for aesthetics is not the same as training for strength. So I made a video on fat loss versus weight loss. This is kind of the same concept, guys. So when you're training for aesthetics, you're not just focused on – the numbers in the gym going up as fast as possible. You still want them to go up, but it's not about making them go up as fast as possible because we're not powerlifters. It's also not about, you know, having the best cardio numbers because it's like, oh, my God, I got to speed up my, you know, running 5K. If you want to run the fastest 5K, you're not going to have the most muscle mass that you can. All right. It's just not going to happen. All right. So you want a good mix of both, obviously. But you really have to realize that your focus will be calisthenics. And I know some people say calisthenics. So you're gonna, you're gonna, it's gonna be calisthenics and hypertrophy. That's gonna be your main focus. All right, quality reps will be more important than quantity. Quality of you know reps at a certain weight is gonna be more important than just the quantity of weight. You know, on a certain movement. Like for me, I I've benched four or five before, but like I don't give like I don't do that anymore because I wasn't the most aesthetic when I did. I was most aesthetic when I was repping, you know, incline bench and doing pull-ups, doing push-ups. And that's all I do now, right? I do calisthenics and then I do hypertrophy. I focus on the movements. I don't just go through the move movements to complete the workout. I literally focus on each movement. And then when each movement's done, then I'm done with the workout. That's how I look at it. Because a lot of people are like, all right, let me just knock out this work as fast as possible. And they just kind of like fuck around with the movements. Their, their, their form... Form will be different for some people, but like they're not feeling the movement. Like if you half rep some shit, but you're feeling it and you look aesthetic, I'm cool with it, man. Because you're not you're not a power lifter and you're not an Olympic weightlifter. You see what I'm saying? So if you half rep some shit, but you're getting a great pump, you feel it and it works for you, you can do this shit. You see what I'm saying? But you really want to focus on actually contracting and getting the movement down. Like I just said, mind muscle connection is gonna be super, super important. So that's why I primarily do incline for most chest things, because obviously if you want to have an aesthetic chest, you got to focus on the, the upper. My lower is just dominant. I don't even hit that shit besides dips. I do not do weighted like lower chest, but I mean, it's always going to respond to even incline. But when I do incline, my upper chest grows a little bit. And if you want that good, you know, aesthetics, you got to focus on upper chest primarily. Now, now, as far as like filling your upper chest, I know a lot of people struggle to fill their chest. Obviously, as you can see here, my scapula is retracted. What you want to do is you want to squeeze your shoulder blades like you're squeezing a pencil. Obviously, have your chest up. Anytime I work out with my brother or some shit like that, I say chest up, chest up, chest up. They get sick of me saying that shit because that's all I say. But when you have a good arch in your back, pause, and your chest is up, you're going to notice that you're getting a better contraction and all of that, right? But in order to actually fill your chest in the first place, you want to make sure that you're... This is, this is propel, bro. It's calorie free. This shit is gas, bro. But you want to make sure that you pre-exhaust your chest first. You can do peg deck, push-ups, cable flies, you know, just something to get some blood in the chest. Now, if you don't have that option and you just want to go straight to incline barbell, do some push-ups first. Do, do a couple of push-ups. Do at least three sets. But then do two warm-up sets with the incline barbell and try to fill your chest only. Don't just put a bunch of weight on it and start it like, you know, raw dogging the weight. Because when you just raw dog the weight without warming up, you're going to feel shoulders, rotator cuff, goddamn kidneys, elbows, fucking everything except your chest which is frustrating. All right, so like I just said, pre-exhausting. So for specifically, when you do like back movements as well, when you're doing back movements, you wanna make sure that you do pull-ups first, 
or at least if you're going to do lat pull downs, at least warm up with lat pull downs so you can feel your lats instead of just pulling everything with your biceps and your traps. I see a lot of people pull with just their bicep or yeah, yeah, and they're just not getting a back pump and their back doesn't grow. And they're like, why isn't my back growing? Because you're pulling with your biceps. Same for quads. When you're working quads, um, before you hit your quads, you want to make sure that you do leg extensions. And of course, like a dynamic warm up so you can actually feel your quads when you're doing the movement. Right. And like I said earlier, before you do incline bench, you definitely want to make sure you're doing pec deck or cable flies. It's going to really, really put some blood flow into your chest. So when you hit the movement, you can actually feel the right area. And then, you you know, you're like, oh, shit, I actually felt the right area for the first time. And then you start growing your chest. That simple. All right, guys. Now, here is one of the things you want to realize. All right. Because especially the youngins, these black pill mindset, like honestly, majority of Generation Z has like the black pill mindset. From what I've seen just from comments. DMs and shit like that, it's all like, okay, how much muscle can I build in three months? Can I build 40 pounds of muscle in three months and lose, you know, 10 pounds of fat? Just crazy shit like that. It's going to take time, all right, because low body fat, low muscle, you're not going to be aesthetic. You have to have high muscle and low body fat, all right? So it's going to take time to build muscle. So if you're super skinny right now, honestly, if you really want to get results, if you're super skinny, go on a two-year lean bulk, or a three-year lean bulk, you'll put on hella muscle. Your first year in the gym, you put on 20 to 25 pounds of muscle, naturally, yes. And then your second year, you put on about, this is if you're a skinny stick, of course you're gonna do it. If your second year, you're gonna do about 12-ish pounds, 12 to 15, your third year is gonna be like, you know, seven-ish. So best case scenario, you can gain like 45 pounds of muscle in three years of consistency. Now, the key word is consistency. The reason people don't believe this shit is because first of all, they don't read, but second of all, is because they're not consistent. Obviously, if you're inconsistent for three years, you probably gain like three pounds of muscle versus if you were consistent for three years, you started at zero. You never worked out before. You're going to go from, you know, six, one, one forty eight, like I did to, you know, 200 and majority of that's going to be muscle. All right. Now, like I just said, like I just said, 30 to 45 pounds of muscle in your lifetime. All right. First four to five years, you're going to build the majority of it. And then after that, you're going to gain a little bit more. Now, if you maximize your muscle muscle mass. It's probably going to be like after, you know, 10 years of training super hard, you might gain like 50 pounds. But majority of you guys just want to kind of have an aesthetic physique with some muscle. Like a lot of people would be satisfied with that. So really just lock in and give yourself a few years to really, you know, build the muscle and lose the fat. Now, during the process, you're going to be seeing results anyways. I know a lot of people are like, oh, my God, this is too long to wait. During the process, you're going to feel better. You're going to become the person you need to become to maintain the goals. But you're also going to see progress in the process. It's not like you're waiting until you gain, you know, all of your muscle, then you're happy. No, you're going to be happier during the process because you're getting to where you need to get to and you become the person you need to become. Like people don't realize that shit. They're like, oh my God. And a lot of people are taking, like a lot of youngins are taking steroids. Like, so there's like some, there's like some young kids, like 18, 19. I see them at the gym and they're like, yeah, man, I just hopped on. They look fucking natty. The only, the only way you can tell they're on steroids is you can't. And that's a problem. Like the fact that they got less than natty results taking steroids is insane. All right. So you guys just have to be patient. If you've never worked out before, it's your first month. You're like, I'm going to help out steroids so I can get good results. Without steroids, in your first year, like I just said, you're going to gain 20 to 25 pounds of muscle. So now that you're on steroids and you gain 20 to 25 pounds of muscle in your first year, you're like, oh, my God, I did good. You would have gained that shit naturally. All right. The problem, the reason you're taking steroids is because you don't trust yourself because you're inconsistent in the gym and inconsistent with nutrition. Nothing can fix that but you. All right. So, like I said, to get the V-taper look like if you want your waist looking smaller, you want some more definition and shit like that, all you have to do is get tatted and then you lose fat. Just kidding. But um, your waist has to get smaller while you maintain your muscle mass. So once you've built up your muscle, you're lean bulked, you have a decent amount of muscle. Once you cut down, maintain, maintain your muscle and lose fat. So you got to focus on fat loss, not weight loss. All right. So you're decreasing your body fat percentage. So your most aesthetic range is going to be between like 17 and, and 12. That's just going to be the most, I mean, 7 and 12 going to be the most aesthetic range. Now, in order to get to that range, we all know that obviously you got to be consistent. And when you get closer to 15, it's going to be a little bit harder to get to lose the last bit. But that's when you start to get the aesthetic look. All right. And this is a very maintainable look. All right. Anything like leaner than this, yeah, it's going to be a little bit harder to maintain. But this is a very maintainable look. All right. All right. So because I am who I am, guys, I am doing red on red here. This is fucking crazy. But seriously, to find your calorie deficit when you want to lose fat, guys, you can use a calorie calculator or you can use the Harris Benedict formula, which is what I use, or my fitness pal will give you a general rule. And you do want to track your foods because too many people, I am telling you, too many people underestimate how much they're eating. They're like, oh, I barely eat. And then, you know, we work out and then we go to lunch or some shit, or they tell me what they're about to eat. I'm like, dude, 
you ate a crazy breakfast and you're going to eat that for lunch, that's good if you're bulking, but you're cutting, bro. You're going to be at 2,000 calories at 12 p.m. You see what I'm saying? Like a lot of people underestimate how much they're eating. So I recommend that you really actually type everything into uh, my fitness process and get a better idea of what you're consuming. 411, 350 is crazy. But anyways, yeah, consistently be in a deficit until you reach a lower body fat percentage as well. Once you're done with your bulk, if you're like 20, 25 percent body fat, you can't see your abs. If you get down to an aesthetic range for you, and you can kind of see your abs and you like what you look like. Then there you're there. All right. You guys overcomplicate this shit a lot. All right. So the best moves for lower body, obviously, is going to be back squats, leg extensions, hack squats, hamstring curls, slow dumbbell deadlifts, barbell deadlifts, Smith machine deadlifts. These the squat machines that they have, super squats is what they call them. Those are pretty awesome as well. All right, obviously upper chest, I already said this, Smith machine incline, dumbbell incline, shoulders rear delt, side raises, back, lat pull downs, pull ups, rows, tricep push downs, curls, close grip bench. I put, I put, uh, yeah, I put two exercises for triceps just because, you know, triceps are bigger than your biceps. And then traps, Smith machine shrugs are probably the best movement and Smith machine upper rows are the best movement for traps, period. As you can see, I have a trap right here and I had no traps before, so that shit's crazy. All right, best split. I like push pull legs. You can do a bro split that works, you know, whatever your weak point is twice, or you could do upper lower. It's, it's pretty simple. This is what I like to do. And to this day, all right, so so yeah, in, in full honesty, to this day, I've been I've been doing this shit, but I always skip the weighted crunches and hang leg raises. Someone's gonna have to help me actually do those fucking movements. I, I fucking hate abs. All right, but as you can see, when I, I warm up on upper body days, I always do pull ups and you know calisthenics. Like I said, some people call it calisthenics. But I, I always warm up with calisthenics before my work, workouts. If I don't do this, if this isn't available, I do a peg deck or cable fly. Very simple shit, all right? Now, consistency is key, man. You can go from this motherfucker to this motherfucker, all right? Everyone can do, everyone can do at least this, all right? Like, I know, I know there's, there's people that, you know, they didn't start off this cooked, so they could probably get further than, you know, this uncooked. But, yeah. Like, if you really put in the work, you, you can do whatever you want to. When I was here, like, people, I just got cooked every single day. I got cooked every day. People were like, you have the worst genetics, you're skinny as shit, you're a loser. This is, like, every single day. And it was just, it was what it was. That's how they, that's what they knew me as. Fast forward 10 years later, those same people are asking me for advice and be like, oh, you got great genetics. How do you go from bad genetics to good genetics? You're just trying to downplay the work, man. It does take work. A lot of people be like, you got BBC genetics. <laughs> no traps to traps, no shoulders to, to shoulders, no chest to chest. Like I put the work in, guys. It, it just is what it is. A lot of people don't know what's, don't realize what's possible because they quit before they start, and that's the black pill mindset. That's the issue with a lot of the people these days. They quit before they start, not knowing that if they started, they can get some crazy results. Like you can, because what happens in the fitness journey that people don't realize is like you work out day in and day out. You do that shit for three years. Like I said earlier, you can gain forty fucking pounds of muscle in three years if you're consistent in the kitchen and you're consistent in the gym. You know how different you will fucking look? You will look completely different, literally. But people just don't put the work in. Honestly, most people's downfall is consistency. I don't see a lot of consistent people out there. That's why when someone's consistent in the gym, you respect them. I get a lot of people come up to me like, damn, man, pretty, uh, bro, props, man. You're looking lean, props, bro. And it's like, they're saying that because it's like, they're like, man, my, my goal is to look lean. They're in there sometimes. They're kind of half assing doing whatever. They're, they're not really serious about their goals. Move with intention if you want good results. Move with intention. And you got to be patient. I already said this shit. You got to be patient. Years of laziness, inconsistency, whacking your shit daily to uh, fucking, what's that girl's name? Uh, fuck. What? Uh, Abella, Abella Danger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whacking your shit to Abella Danger and Miss Be Nasty instead of actually going to sleep and holding your seed. That's what's, and playing Roblox and playing fucking Final Fantasy. That's what has you cooked. All right. Now, if you want to uncook yourself, you want to be decooknified. You got to be patient, guys. You got to be patient. All right. So to build a muscle, obviously, and lose the fat is going to take years, but the years are going to pass regardless. Why not be close to your goal and further away from it? Like, come on. Huh? Simple shit. So why most people won't build their aesthetic physique, guys? It's, it's very fucking simple. This is very simple. You have the victim mindset. Oh, it's my genetics. Oh, my God. And like I said, people came up to me in the gym. And they have way better genetics than I do. It's not even fucking close. But they're at their starting point. They're trying to compare their starting point to my 87-year point because I'm a vampire. No, but seriously, they're trying to compare their starting point to, like, my 10th year. It's just, just not – their 10th year is going to be way better than my 10th year, but they have to actually put in the work. And they're discouraged already because they, they have that instant gratification mindset. You see what I'm saying? And they're like, man, you got good genetics. I'm like, bro, your arm has the musculature – 
that it took me like four years to build that you said you worked out for three months. Your shoulders are already bigger than mine. Like your quads are big, like you're good. Like all you gotta do is put in the work. And people always make excuses why they can't reach their goals. And like I say, a lot of you guys make excuses. Now, the reason I don't tolerate excuses is because you don't believe in yourself. And if you don't believe something, I'm not gonna believe it, all right? How dumb will I look if I believe some shit you don't believe? I look dumb as hell, right? And another thing is you always make time for what you prioritize. Like if, if everything's going wrong and you're like, damn, it's a horrible day, you're, st you're still making your time to whack your shit to a bell of danger, right? Which means that you, that's what you prioritize and that's why you're not at your goals. When you prioritize fitness and you prioritize getting to the best version of yourself, you're gonna hit the gym no matter what, number one. Number two, you're gonna eat what you need to eat. Now, another thing is people who say they don't have time is the dumbest shit ever. If you don't have time to eat, then how are you alive? Number one, if you don't have time to eat, how are you big as hell? Both of those don't make sense, all right? A lot of people are inconsistent, like I said. They, they do shit when they feel like it and they lack structure. When they go to the gym, they do pec deck and they do leg extensions and then some ab work to target their belly fat and then they quit. Simple shit, all right? So anyways, link will be in the bio, y'all. Stay blessed.